looks like you've stumbled on the HVAC School podcast, the podcast that helps you remember some things that you might have forgotten about the HVACR industry or helps you remember some things you forgot to know in the first place. I'm Brian, and uh, today's episode is called A Moisture Problem. A Moisture Problem. But before we get into that, I want to thank our sponsors. Sponsors and partners, I should say. That is Mitsubishi Comfort and Carrier. They've been with me in business since the very beginning when I started Kalos in 2005. And uh, they've been great partners with us. They are the equipment that we sell at my company. So that makes them an easy, easy, low-hanging fruit for me to talk about here on the podcast. And I'm very thankful to them for making this podcast a possibility. I also want to thank Air Oasis. Air Oasis makes an excellent quality bipolar ionizer. They make a great... AHPCO system that sends out hydrogen peroxide ions into the air. Probably familiar with it. There's a lot of different technologies like that. But what I like about Air Oasis is that they're American made. They're really quality people. They make a really good product. We haven't had any issues with their products. Um, they're very forthright with their training. They help you understand how it works. If you want to find out more, you can go to airoasis.com. And I also want to thank Wrightsoft for what they do to make excellent design products for Manual D, Manual J. They also have one now for Florida Florida Energy Code, which I use a lot. And I want to thank those guys for, for making great software and supporting us here on the podcast as well. But today's podcast is called A Moisture Problem. And I, I have to give full credit on this to my friend Joe Medosh. Joe Medosh was uh, formerly lead trainer, or I don't know if he's a lead trainer. He was a trainer for RetroTech. and went all around the country, and that's how I met Joe. Uh, also, RetroTech, also a good company. They make uh, blower doors and duck leak test kits and everything. But Joe was down doing a little training with us not long ago, and uh, we were talking talking with Joe, and we the subject of mold came up. We were specifically talking about healthy homes. And, of course, even just saying the mold word, I feel like I, I shouldn't be saying it because, you know, it's something we don't say in the field. We don't say the M word. In fact, I tell my guys don't say mold or mildew. When, uh, for years I've said uh, biological growth or organic growth, right? Um, but I use that phrase with Joe, and he said, no, you don't even need to say that. He said, just say that they have a moisture problem because that is fact-based, you say anything else, you may be saying something wrong because you don't you don't know for sure exactly what's growing, and you're not an expert. And in some states like Florida, we can't even comment on it. We're really not licensed to even comment on mold or test for it or measure it or any of those things. So what can we say then? You know, a customer walks up and says, "What's going on here?" We can say, "You've clearly got a moisture problem." Now, if it's something that uh, obviously is is going to be a real danger to them, then you may make some suggestions, you know, get somebody who is a expert in those areas. But in general, you know, we find these little things here and there. And whenever we find those types of growth, we, we know that it's a moisture problem. And, and as uh, HVAC experts, some of you may be plumbers as well, we're able to deal with the source of the moisture problem. We're able to deal with indoor air quality. So we can uh, talk to the customer about things that can help with their indoor air quality. We're allowed to install some indoor air quality products, starting with good filtration. You know, that's the that's the basis of everything. Start with good filtration and then go up from there based on the customer's needs and desires. But we really need to be thinking about moisture problems. And why do we have growth? Well, we have growth because we have a moisture problem. And why do we have a moisture problem when, as it pertains to at least the air conditioning? We have a moisture problem because something is hitting dew point and, or water's leaking. I mean, obviously, if you get a... <laughs> If you got a pipe that's leaking or something or a, or a roof that's leaking, well, that can cause a moisture problem. But in a lot of cases, it's because something's hitting dew point or because we're, we're actually adding moisture to the space. So a couple, a couple interesting cases. Um, you can have cases where something's hitting dew point because the temperature of whatever it is is lower than it ought to be. That would be cases where uh, in Florida, let's say a customer sets the inside of their inside temperature down to 66 and, uh, of course, aside from the system probably freezing when it gets down to that temperature, if you get a space too cold inside, you're going to have a big moisture driver from the outside, and you're actually going to drive the indoor temperature below dew point in a lot of cases, which means that somewhere there's going to be moisture. Hopefully, it's at the vapor barrier on the outside of the house, but if, it, if the vapor barrier is not fully intact, then it could happen on the inside walls right behind that drywall. So this is where you'll see cases where you start to get a moisture problem behind drywall is when you don't have a properly sealed envelope on the outside, keeping moisture from coming in, in addition to a, a temperature inside the space that's that's lower than it ought to be. It's lower than outdoor dew point. I mean, 
theoretically, we really don't ever want to get the inside lower than outdoor dew point because that's going to create condensation somewhere. But in the real world, we, of course, you know, can't control our customers, and sometimes that's going to happen. And so what do we do about it? Well, there, there's a lot of things we can do about it. One thing that I've been thinking a lot about lately, and we're going to have a podcast about it very soon, is ventilating dehumidifiers. Actually making sure your relative humidity inside the, inside the space stays 55% or below, and that also brings in some out, outdoor air in order to put the house under positive pressure, which helps reduce infiltration if you have a leaky house. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, and obviously, that's a fairly extreme one, but a lot of it can be, you know, you, sometimes you can fix it by sealing the envelope itself, keeping the moisture out in the first place. In some cases, it's a matter, maybe you can convince the customer that they shouldn't keep their temperature so low. Um, in some cases, things hit dew point, though, not because of something the customer does. Uh, an example would be, let's say you have a, a duct that's lost its insulation or the insulation is compressed. You see a, tr- uh, a flex duct that's running over a truss and that flex is compressed. And in that area, you'll a lot of times get some moisture. And in that moisture, you can have a moisture problem, which means some biological growth that you'll find there. And so what do we solve? Well, what we want to solve is the moisture problem. We want to take away that problem that was causing that in the first place. So we want to lift that duct up, strap it up properly so we don't have that compression of the insulation. What do we do in the case if we have a you know, top of an air handler where it connects to the duct is sweating because it's improperly sealed or improperly connected? Well, we deal with the moisture problem. We, we, we properly seal it, properly insulate it to make sure, properly connect it so that you're not going to have that moisture problem. There's some other cases. Let's say you have a vent that is uh, starting to sweat, has a moisture problem, and then the growth that goes along with that. Well, what do you do? You identify what is the source of the problem. Is the source of the problem that the supplier is too low temperature and that low temperature supplier is resulting in that vent hitting dew point? Could that be because you have a dirty air filter? Maybe you have a bypass damper that's open in a zoning system, other air restrictions that are causing a really low coil temperature? Could it be because the blower settings aren't correct? Those are all things that can result in the temperature of the air being lower than it should be, which can result in dew point, can result in a moisture problem. Or could it be that air is actually escaping around the edges of that boot around the drywall and you're getting a moisture problem around the edges because you have infiltration around that vent? Well, that's that's fairly easy to solve. You just have to seal it up. Make sure it's properly sealed, properly insulated. Seal the gap in between the boot and the drywall. That's something that has to be done often. Take that grill off and you can do it from the inside or you can go up top and do it with uh, with foam or sealant around the outside of the boot. It's a, probably even a better option in some cases. So then that's in an attic application, obviously. Crawl space would be the opposite, but the same basic idea. And so we can sometimes solve the problem by reducing air infiltration. But the air doesn't, again, a key thing with mo- with a moisture problem is you don't have a moisture problem where hot meets cold. A lot of people will say that. Well, you get moisture where hot meets cold. That's not true. You get a moisture problem where moisture-laden air hits a lower temperature, hits a dew point temperature. That's where you get it. And of course, hotter air can hold more moisture. So often that is the case. Often that's the perception is that where this hot air mass hits it, that's where you get the condensation. But really it's because that air mass has a higher dew point, that warmer air mass has a higher dew point, uh, meaning it, it hits dew easier because it has more moisture content. Your dew point tracks with the amount of moisture in the air. So main thing of this podcast, this quick little podcast is we don't need to talk about mold. We don't need to say mildew. We don't even need to say biological growth in most cases. We can just say you have a moisture problem. So that customer asks you, what is this? The answer is simply, I don't know, ma'am, but I do see that you have a moisture problem and I can help you with that. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. Obviously, there are extreme cases. We don't want people to be in bad situations where it's going to make them sick or anything like that. But we also know nowadays that a lot of times uh, these problems, um, we, we need to fix the source of them. We as professionals need to fix the source of them. And then the customer, based on their particular uh, resistance or uh, sensitivity to things in the air, then they need to pursue additional solutions occasionally in order to deal with the with the M word. But that's not what we do in our profession. That's a separate license, a separate set of professions. But we are licensed and we are trained to deal with moisture problems, especially moisture problems that have to do with dew point. So hopefully that helps. Thank you for all of our uh, partners. Thank you for all of you who listen. If you wouldn't mind going on iTunes and giving us a review based on whether you, you know, if you like it or if you don't like the podcast, leave me a review. Let me know what you think. I would greatly appreciate that. And uh, we'll talk to you next time on our full-length version of the HVAC School Podcast. (laughs) 